So the basic ingredients and equipment that you need for making a yeast uh, starter are, are right in front of me here and you. I have, uh, of course, the yeast. Here I'm using a Y yeast liquid activator pack. Um, you also need a flask or, or a container. I'm using a flask, a 1,000 milliliter flask. Uh, you also need some malt extract powder. I got three ounces here I'm going to use for myself. Uh, and then, of course, a, uh, a, a stopper with a drilled hole in it for um, an airlock. And here I have a plastic airlock and a glass airlock. And also a little bit of foil, which I'll show you. There's, an, uh, there's two ways of doing the airlocks, and I'll try to show them both. I go back and forth between the two. I really don't have a favorite method. But, uh, but, but here's the basics, and this, is, and this is all you need to get started, along with some water, of course. Now let's get started. Alright, so these Y yeast packs have a have a little bubble pouch in here of nutrients that you can pop and crack and um, and that kind of feeds the yeast in here and it'll get it'll, it'll pop and swell up. So the first thing I, I gotta do is look for this and feel around for this bubble that's in here. And whoop and you have to get in here and find it and pop it. There, I think I think that was it. So now all I gotta do is give it a little shake and let it sit for a couple few hours and it'll puff and swell up in just like a inflated balloon and we'll come back. All right, let's get the uh, the flask going in the in the water here. So what I have in my flask here, I'm gonna add I'm gonna add the dry ingredients here. This, this, I got here three ounces of the dry malt extract and dump it all in. Alright, so that's about three ounces of that. Then I'm going to fill it up to about 750 milli milliliters. 750 milliliters. Something like that. Alright, and then I'm going to turn on the, turn on the stove. And then, because that thing's going to heat up a lot, I have a glove here, heat resistant glove. I'm just going to swirl. There we go. I'm going to let that heat up over there now. And this is, this is going to take a while to, for it to start to boil, so you got to stand nearby. Keep stirring it so it doesn't burn in the bottom and it all dissolves in there. So this will take a, at least a few minutes. One more thing that I like to add. Before it gets hot, is a little uh, yeast nutrient. Uh, I usually measure it out, but I'm going to eyeball it this time. About an eighth teaspoon or so. Something like that. And I'm going to swirl that in too. Alright, it's been a few minutes. You can see it's cleared out a little bit. You get a little bit of foam gathering on top. It's starting to make a sound like it's starting to bubble in there somewhere so you definitely want to keep an eye on this thing now so it doesn't boil over because these uh, Erlenmeyer flasks will definitely boil over because of their shape real fast just like a volcano so uh, you gotta keep a close eye on them and uh, just make sure it doesn't boil over and we'll wait till it starts to boil and then we'll go on to the next step okay here it goes it's starting to boil over you see it bubbling you see that See how fast that happens? Look at that. Right, right, right over the top. Right over the top. Look at that. I caught it just in time. So I'm just going to let it settle off the side for just a moment. Let it settle down. And maybe turn down the burner a little bit now too, actually. And once I get it to a steady boil, I'm going to put, a, put the um, top on it to sanitize it as well but not until it gets past this initial boil over stage. See, but see how fast that was? I mean, I can barely get the camera turned back on in time to catch it. That's how fast it happens. So you gotta keep an eye on these things. See, it's really, really steaming there. But it'll, it'll settle back down. 
and you can put it right back on there again. See? And then it'll start to bubble again. But, uh, and you can adjust the flame so it's not so rapid. That's why I'm going to turn it down. Just so it boils barely. See? A little bit lower, actually, even. Alright, so... Once I'm confident that it's not going to foam over so fast again, which it's about to here, pull it off a bit. Just, 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 just let it sit for a minute, and let it calm back down again. You know, it makes it not worthwhile to want to use these flasks, but um, I must say that the fact that I'm heating the actual vessel and sanitizing the vessel with the wort in it uh, makes me feel more comfortable and that my yeast starter won't be tainted before I use it. So I, I put up with this because of this reason alone. There it goes. So now it's going to get back on there again. So now I got the flame turned down. It should resume to a mild boil. If it doesn't I'll turn down the heat some more. Just like that. Turn down the heat even more. There we go. And now it's just going to get to a small rolling boil. Just hopefully like that. And I think it's now under control. Okay, so a couple of close calls there, just like I warned you about. So now, what I want to do, there's two things you can do, depending on what kind of uh, airlock you have. If you have the, if you only have the plastic airlock, you can't really put this in here, it'll melt, right? So you can't sanitize this with the steam from coming out of here. So uh, you would have to do something else later, which I can uh, which I can walk you through, but, it, but, but to do that, it'd be effectively, um, for the time being, you can actually just cover this in foil and put like a little light tent over it like that, you know, if you want to, to help sanitize inside of the thing. Um, but what seems to work pretty well too is that if you get a glass um, airlock like this one, you can use the rubber stopper and put it right on top of there and sanitize the flask just like the, I'm sorry, sanitize the airlock just like you're sanitizing the flask with the steam and the heat. And that makes me feel more comfortable too. So that's what I'm going to do for this for this video right now. Okay, it's only been about another minute here. So what I did here is I put my little uh, glass airlock in the little stopper here. And I'm just going to put the stopper right up in there, just like that. And now what's going to happen now is that the steam is going to rise to here, rise up through here, rise up through the airlock above here like this, see? And that's going to then sanitize this whole airlock and leave a little bit of water in there ultimately. And it will be completely sanitized. Alright, so now that it's boiling again, I am going to let this boil for 15, maybe 20 minutes to sanitize everything and boil the work down. Alright, it's 10 minutes in and uh, you can see this uh, airlock's got uh, some, some fluid in it, or steam, evaporated steam, and it's bubbling up in there. So now it's got its own little airlock from the evaporated steam in there, so that's why I do it this way. So the whole, the whole uh, closed system here sort of is uh, all sanitized. Time is up, been over 15 minutes and uh, it's had plenty of time on here so I'm going to turn off the heat and you can see here it's still hot, still bubbling, you got the little airlock, it's all sanitized in there. Now I need to let it cool off the room temperature so I can you know put it off to the side and, and let it sit or if I'm in a hurry I can soak it in some ice water in the sink um, to cool it off quicker but it's uh, definitely your option. Okay back to the liquid yeast here. You see the package did swell quite nicely over the past couple hours that it sat here. So uh, what we gotta do now is wait for the uh, starter work to finish cooling off and then we'll add, it, add this to that. Now that the starter wort is cooled off now we can add the yeast to it. What I have here is the yeast packet and a pair of scissors to cut it with. Uh, I'm going to sanitize my spray bottle both sides of that as well as all around the package where I plan to make the cut. I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and uh, you know what I'm also just for uh, make sure it's all sanitized is around the outside lip of 
the flask where the stopper meets the flask. And I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes before I go ahead and open this thing up. One final step before I add the yeast, and while the sanitizer's you know working, I'm going to I have to aerate this because because when you boil this thing, uh, it loses a lot of the oxygen in in the uh, wort that the yeast want to feed on. So what I got to do is aerate this container for several minutes, a few minutes at least, shake it all around, get it nice and foamy to get oxygen back into the liquid because the yeast the yeast really need that so let's take care of that first there we go all right it's time to inoculate the uh, starter wort so I'm going to take the top off of this thing off the flask carefully uh, lower it maybe place it off to the side try not to let it touch too many surfaces I'm going to sanitize it anyway but just to be sure then I'm going to take the packet, give it a little stir, make sure everything's all mixed together there. Take the pair of scissors and I'm going to go ahead and cut the corner off of there. Okay, you can't see in there but no, I certainly smell the yeast now. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour the yeast in. There we go. Alright, I'm going to put this back on. Do a little spray with my spray bottle, sanitizer. Make sure everything's kosher. Shove this back on. Make sure there is, let me raise this up a little bit. Make sure that there is sufficient liquid in there. If not, I'm going to just maybe use my spray, my star sand, and give it just a little bit more. And then that's my airlock. And now I'm going to push this whole thing off to one side somewhere and let it bubble overnight and all day tomorrow until I'm ready to use it uh, on my final beer. One more piece of advice that I should mention. Um, I pour the yeast in. I give it a swirl, right, to, to, to mix it in. However, it, it, it's, it's better for the yeast if you occasionally give it a squirrel every so often between now and the time you need to use it. Um, that helps the yeast, the yeast growth, um, the, helps the yeast grow a lot better. They actually sell stir plates that you can put these on uh, that actually have a little bar inside that, stirs and, uh, that, that turns and, and stirs it constantly. I don't have one of those, at least not yet, so what I do is every hour or so, or whenever I get around to w walking by this thing in the house, I'll, I'll give it a squirrel, just to keep the yeast in suspension. Alright, it's the next morning, it's uh, been going on for many hours now. I give it a swirl, like, just like I said, stir the yeast that fell out of solution back into the solution, and it's still bubbling. So uh, let's just go the rest of the day while I make the uh, beer and then I'll add it later. To continue watching the next video in my home brewing basic series about all grain brewing, click on the link provided. Thanks for watching.